If there's anyone who's not authorized to be here, uh, you're welcome to stay. I'm going to tell you about the Blonsky device. In 1991, I and some other people founded something called the Ig Nobel Prizes, which, as Julian told you, are prizes for things that make people laugh and then think. These are real things. These are people from around the world. We have a giant ceremony at Harvard University. The winners come at their own expense, because we don't have any money. We have on stage a bunch of people who have Nobel Prizes, who shake their hands, and we expose these people to the world, which is usually a good thing. We've had 230 winners. This is one of them. The Blonskys are two people, George and Charlotte Blonsky. They have a patent. It was given in 1965 for what they call an apparatus for facilitating the birth of a child by centrifugal force. George and Charlotte Blonsky were married. At the time they got the patent, they were living in the Bronx. This is a local story, among other things. I'll show you a photo of the device. This is from their patent. This is the Blonsky device. It consists, as you can see, of a large round table and some machinery. Let's see if we can do something about this feedback. Is, is that a little better? Okay. If it's intolerable, say something. The Blonsky invention, it's a large round table with some machinery underneath. When the woman is ready to deliver her child, she lies on the table, on her back. They strap her down, and then the table is rotated at high speed, and the child comes flying out through centrifugal force. We chose them to win one of the Ig Nobel Prizes, and then we set about finding them. It took us years to track them down. By the time we did, neither one was alive. They had both lived long lives into their 80s and 90s. We finally found their niece, who was living in California, and the Blonskys had lived with the niece and her husband for many years, so we got to hear a lot of detail about them. So a lot of what I'm able to tell you, I learned from their closest and dearest relative. Here's another picture of it. This is the side view. Okay, there's nobody here who's used this. Is that correct? <laughs> as far as we know, this was never quite put into use. The big question I had in my mind, that we all had, the organizers, before we were able to get in touch with the Blonsky family was, what kind of person would come up with this idea? You can imagine a whole range of possibilities. Most of them are not very good. And the story was very different from what we expected. It turned out, her, their niece told us, that the Blonskys were sweet people, they loved children, and the whole thing began... George was an engineer. The whole thing began one day when they went to their favorite place, the Bronx Zoo. They loved to go to the zoo. And one day, when they were there, they were visiting the elephants. Is there a lot of echo here? Yeah, let me know if that keeps happening. I'll, I'll try to do something. And then we have valiant sound crew here who are trying to do something. If it doesn't work, throw something at all of us. One day they were visiting the Bronx Zoo and they saw an elephant. The elephant was slowly twirling. They'd never seen this and they couldn't figure it out. So they asked one of the zookeepers, what's going on? And the zookeeper told them, ah, She's pregnant. That's a pregnant elephant. That's what elephants do just before they give birth. And George and Charlotte walked home thinking about this, and they thought, there are a lot of women who have difficulty giving birth. George, you're an engineer. You can do something about this. And that's the story of how the Blonsky device came about. The patent itself is long. It's 10 pages long, an enormous amount of detail, a lot of other drawings. All right, we gave him the prize. That was 15 years ago. As part of the ceremony every year, we write an opera. We steal the music from classical operas, usually, or from old sources, from dead people, basically, who can't fight back. And I write new words about something. This past year, I wrote an opera about the Blonskys and the Blonsky device. I took a few liberties with the plot. In, in, in the opera, Charlotte decides to get pregnant, and they decide to use the machine. 
But other than that, basically, it's the real story. And I'm going to show you now a little snippet of the beginning of the opera when they visit the zoo. This is George and Charlotte Blonsky getting their brilliant idea. That's the Bronx Zoo. it started. Now, it turns out that's not the story of how elephants give birth. <laughs> Either the zookeeper wasn't a very good zookeeper, <laughs> or the zookeeper was joking and they didn't realize it. George was an engineer, after all. Nevertheless, they got the idea and they proceeded ahead, and years later, we proceeded with the opera. The machine is all based on this idea of centrifugal force, which I'm sure you've experienced. This is from the patent. Okay, I apologize for showing you numbers. I realize numbers make people uncomfortable, but there aren't many. I'll point out some highlights. This is a, a, a part of the patent where they're talking about the amount of force that the mother and child would feel. They were very worried about safety. Safety was the number one thing. So they were calculating how much force, and they did it in terms of Gs, the force of gravity, the bottom there, and the, and the right column. That's how many times the force of normal force of gravity, the force that's pulling you into your seat right now. They very carefully designed this so that under no conditions could the mother or child possibly experience more than seven Gs, seven <laughs> times the force of gravity. I have talked with jet pilots who say that they sometimes black out at 4 Gs. <laughs> Look at the second column from the left. Revolutions per second. By the time you get up to 1 G pulling you sideways, you're making a revolution every two seconds. Imagine yourself where you are, spinning every two seconds. That's just the force you're feeling now. By the time you get up to seven Gs, gee, look at that, you're, you're spinning a half, one and a half times every second. That's interesting. <laughs> right. When that happens, it pulls the thing up. So you can see that the tilt changes, and you've experienced that too, going around the corner in a train or in many other things. In the opera, the next stage of things which happened was they went to the patent office to try to convince the patent office that this patent was worth granting. So here you're going to see a little piece of the scene where the patent official, who has just read this document for the first time, has some doubts. And George and Charlotte are going to try to convince him that safety really is what this is all about. And Charlotte, at this point, is very, very, very pregnant. Explain your stuff. 
I tried to read it, but it wasn't clear enough, not clear enough. It helps a woman birth a child. That's rather wild. You put her on the table, that is motorized. Could be sized. A woman lies down on her back. She's on a rack. And then you rotate her at 60 RPM. I must condemn. And so the child comes flying out, it's quick and fun. I think we're done. It's very it's simple. simple. It's a simple apparatus for delivery of babies with the turntable that spins the mother and ejects the child. Alice Water Boxes oh, with Alice Water Boxes. At that point, her water breaks, and <laughs> suddenly the patent examiner becomes very cooperative. Now, I want to speak to you just about one other piece of the patent. When the child comes out, you may have noticed, there is a way to catch it. It's a little net. <laughs> Look at it, it's a little. <laughs> many people, including many engineers who have looked at this, have decided that quite possibly that net is not adequate to the task. <laughs> In the opera, that became the crux of the matter at the thrilling conclusion, that they brought Charlotte over, they put her into the machine, and then the technicians and, and the zookeeper decided to help, and the patent office guy was so embarrassed, he came and he decided to help, and they're all there. Suddenly, it occurs to them, there's only this little net to catch the child who is about to be born. And this is the thrilling conclusion to the opera, and I'll tell you a couple other things you might want to know about it. The orchestra, we recruited a special orchestra. All the people in that orchestra are professors or researchers at Harvard Medical School or MIT. The director, conductor, arranger, Henry Acona is from New York. I think I've lured Henry to come tonight. Henry, are you here? Could you come up front and just take a quick bow? If you noticed somebody conducting the orchestra, and you will, this is Henry Acona. Stand in the light for a moment so they can see who you are. Hi, Mark. Hello, Henry. And then the other thing that happens at the very end of the opera, Henry managed to wrangle all these people, is that some of the world's great scientists have come on the scene to witness this. And at the last moment, they're recruited in the opera and, in fact, to try to catch the child when it emerges. The people you see lined up, the four old guys lined up to catch older guys, lined up to try to catch the child when the child emerges. All of them have Nobel Prizes. <laughs> None of them was rehearsed for a moment. I give you now the thrilling conclusion to the opera, The Blonsky Device. Get to the point, get to the point. You tell me what, tell me what you mean. That tiny net that we've seen, that, that net is far from routine. That little net, that little net, it is a strange part of the machine. Baby gets caught by that net. Baby gets caught by that net. Look at that net, look at that net. Maybe how do it with him yet? Baby relies on that net. Baby relies on that net. That, that net is frail. That net is frail. That net is hard. Somebody's talking to spin the machine. Somebody's talking to spin the machine. Somebody's talking to spin the machine. Suddenly, 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 swirling and 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 faster 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 and fa
that's the Blonsky Opera. Again, Henry Dakota. And the last thing I want to show you is a simple photograph. In case you're wondering, this is a photo of the real George and Charlotte Blonsky. Taken in the Bronx in their home. Thank you very much.